Thank you. I'm Lizzie Haywood. I'm the new CEO for People's Food Co-op in La Crosse, Wisconsin, in Rochester, Minnesota. I've worked with this co-op for uh, just over four years and have been the general manager since August. And in the last 10 years, I've worked with uh, three co-op organizations in four stores. So I'm going to share some of uh, my challenges and experiences. And thank you, David. I think they fit pretty well into some of the things that we've been reflecting on already this morning. And I'm going to throw out some ideas to test. You can take them where you want to. <laughs> so one major challenge that we have had, especially in our Rochester community, uh, because it is such a rapidly growing community, is finding qualified staff. Um, there's been a significant, um, not just in that store, but both of our stores and then co-ops in general, retirement of people um, out of our organizations who had direct connections to the genesis of the co-op movement, right? Whether that was 10 or 20 or 30 years ago, these people are very connected and very much were the leaders. Those people are retiring out. And then there's also this lack of bodies, actually not enough people in our communities, especially in Rochester, um, to fill qualified, who are qualified to fill those positions. Um, oftentimes we're finding that's due to competition uh, in the food service or in the grocery world. Um, more stores moving in, restaurants, especially in these rapidly growing communities, they're taking the people that maybe you've already trained, definitely have already trained them, and they're leaving for elsewhere. Um, also, we find that laws change quickly, and it's requiring a lot more work in our human resources department and a lot of um, stress on our personnel taking care of those kind of things. Anybody dealing with ACA paperwork right now knows what I'm talking about. So I've been thinking, what if I had a ready group of workers who was confident that working for my co-op um, would really fit what they need in their lives? And what if I knew that those workers might already be in another community, in another co-op, and were looking to move, or were growing up and were looking for a new position? Um, what if I had um, people who were not just confident in the co-op, but really interested in working for co-ops across the co-op community. There was really a free movement of these people. Um, if the stores that I worked in could have standardized uh, and really under shared understanding of the training and onboarding of new employees, um, if we shared information officially about new compliance and laws, um, I think, what could I have gained in a workforce that really strengthens my co-op and also where we serve the needs of those people um, as they maybe not just come to us but move out into other communities? Um, so that's the first idea, this first challenge. The second one, uh, the thing I worry about a lot, and I'm just coming off the Moses Conference last weekend in La Crosse, Wisconsin, so this was definitely on my mind, but has been um, as I watch our competitors take the local food language and even our local food um, producers uh, and supply for themselves, uh, I worry about protecting the supply of our local and sustainably produced food for my consumers. Um, I don't think that we're very conscientious about really knowing what we need in the next three to five years and how we're going to grow our farms to sustain that need, and how are we going to keep our stores as the favorites for those producers to sell to. Um, I have buyers who have years of experience, um, and yet my farmers might find that the systems are piecemeal, that one buyer behaves differently than, than another, that systems are esoteric, that there's these pain in the ass ways that they have to deliver. Maybe it's not just to my store, but maybe it's to another store. I've actually had a conversation made really sad with a great producer who said, I'd much rather deliver to your co-op than this other one 100 miles away because they have a new buyer who doesn't know what they're doing. That does not serve the co-op community. Um, so I wonder what could happen if our buyers work together to develop standardized systems for 
invoicing, for delivery, for talking with our producers about the Food, Sa food S Safety Modernization Act, um, for uh, all of the kind of packaging that we need. Even better, what if we were talking to them about what are the needs of volume of our co-ops in a particular region over the next five years, and how do our co-ops contribute to helping them produce that volume? How do we remain the favorite buyers for our local food producers? How do we keep that connection going? Um, where we're more predictable as a group, um, can show them that we have higher volume to purchase, and can even talk about capitalization of their own production. So uh, those are the things on my mind, and I look forward to talking with you more about them today. Thank you.